Today we will be solving this problem called money sums. So we have n coins with certain values and our task is to find all money sums we can create using these coins. So the first line of our input will contain an integer n up to a hundred, then follow n values up to a thousand. Like in this case, we can achieve nine different sums, namely these. So let's go to the drawing board and see how we can solve this problem. So in order to understand this problem better, let's go ahead and solve this simpler version of the problem. Let's suppose we only have three coins of value two, four, and five. And let's construct this tree that represents all possible moves we can make. So we will start with a sum equal to zero and we will just add the first coin to it. So if we add two to zero, we will get a sum equal to zero. We can also add 4 to it and we will get 4 or we can add 5 to it and we will get 5. And these are all the possible values we can reach after just one move. Then after the second move, we can no longer use the coin with value 2 because we already used it. So we can either use coin with value 4 or coin with value 5. So if we use coin with value 4, we'll get 6. And if we use coin with value 5, we get 7. And we, the same will apply for 4 and 5. Here we can use coins 2 and 5. And here we can use coins 2 and 4. And in the last layer here, we only have one more coin available. Because in this branch, we already used 2 and 4. So we only have 5 left. And using 5, we will get to the total of 11. And this will apply also for all other branches. So what we can notice here is that we have redundant values here and here and along all these leaves. So all these leaves are equal to 11. We also have uh, 9 repeated here and here, 7 also here and here. And if we were to construct this tree, it will be of size n factorial because this first layer had 3 coins and each coin we will have n minus 1 coin so we will have 3 times 2 and then each of these coins we will have n minus 2 coins so 3 times 2 times 1 and in general the this tree will have n factorial vertices which is crazy huge so we cannot actually go ahead and construct this tree and since many values here are redundant we need to find a way to avoid calculating these values again and again. So as we saw in a previous problem, we can just use these values in order and not use them ever again. So I'll go ahead and highlight this in this tree and see if I miss any values doing so. So the first value of my coin is 2 and all my starting point is zero and since i can only use this two the only thing i can do is make this branch and reach this value next i can use this coin four and using this i can either start from zero and go down this branch and reach this node or i can explore this node further by adding this four to it so adding this, I will reach this node. And finally, I can use this 5. And uh, the values I can explore now are 0 again. So 0 with 5 will give me this branch and I will reach this node. I can also explore this 4 using 5 to reach 9. And I can also explore this 2 using 5 to reach 7. And finally, I can explore this 6 further using 5 to reach 11. So now let's see the values that I highlighted. So I highlighted 2, 6, 7, 11, 4, 9, and 5. And let's check if I missed any values. So this 6 is already found. This 11 is already found. This 11 is already found. This 11 as well. 7, I already found a 7, so this is accounted for. 9, this also is accounted for. 
and the same goes for these 11s so as you can see I did not miss any value and the values that I omitted were only obtained through another ordering of the sums and as we saw in a previous problem processing these values in order guarantees that uh, the sums we will create will be distinct uh, or will be distinct up to reordering so 2 plus 4 plus 5 will be the same thing as 4 plus 2 plus 5 so a word about implementation here how can we go ahead and construct this tree we can actually just represent it as an array and first of all let's agree that all the possible values that we can reach have a maximum value that is equal to the sum of all coins and in the beginning we can just reach this value that is equal to 0 so let's have an array that goes from 0 up to 11 and we will initialize the value for 0 with 1 whereas all the other values will be just equal to 0 and now we will go through these coins and for each coin we will check for each position if it is possible to go from that position to a position that is already reachable and if so update that value to 1 so using the first coin that has value 0 we will check for 1 can we use the first coin to go to a value that is already visited and the answer is no because uh, if we subtract 2 from 1 we will get negative 1 moving on to 2 can we get a, a, to a state that is visited using coin with value 2 and the answer is yes because 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 and 0 is reachable so we will update this to 1 moving on to 3 can we reach a state that is already visited using coin with value 2 and the answer is no because using 2 we will reach 1 and 1 is not visited so this will remain as 0 but notice what happens here now we are at position 4 and using coin with value 2 we will reach this position which is at value 2 and it is already visited so we will update this with 1 but this is not correct because we cannot reach 4 using just this first coin because we can only use it once and here since we updated this answer based on this answer that was just updated this turn uh, we actually shouldn't update this to 1 it should remain a 0 and basically a value can be updated only if it reaches a state that was reached using previous coins not this coin included so in order to remedy for this and avoid using values that were just updated using this actual coin we can just start from the end of the array and going this way we ensure that no update will be used for the same coin so here for 11 uh, since 9 is not reached so far this will remain a 0 this will remain a 0 all the way up to 0 all the way up to 2 so 2 minus 2 is 0 so we will update this to 1 now we will move on to the second coin uh, 11 minus 4 is 7, 0, 10 minus 4 is 6, 0, 9 minus 4 is 5, 0, and so on until we reach 6. 6 minus 4 is 2 and 2 is already explored so we can update this 6 to 1. Moving on, uh, we will reach 4 and 4 minus 4 is 0 so we will update this to 1 as well and now we will move to our last coin 5 and we will start from the from the end again so 11 minus 5 is 6 and 6 is already visited so we will update this to 1 10 minus 5 is 5 but 5 is not visited so this will remain a 0 9 minus 5 is 4 and 4 is already visited so we can update this to 1 8 minus 5 is 3 which is not visited so we won't do anything 7 minus 5 is 2 
and since 2 is already visited we will update this to 1 we will move on 6 minus 5 is 1 but 6 is already visited so we don't need to do anything and now 5 minus 5 is 0 and 0 is already visited so we will just update this to 1 and in order to print our answer we will just iterate through values from 1 up to the sum of all coins and if the coin if the this is set to 1 we will just print that value so we will print 2 4 5 6 7 9 and 11 and these are the exact values we got here so a word about complexity here for each coin we look through all possible values from 0 up to the total sum of all coins and the total sum of all coins will be n times m which is about uh, 10 to the fifth because m can be as large as a thousand and n can be as large as a hundred so the total sum can be up to 10 to the fifth and for uh, we do this for each coin and we have up to 2 to the second coins so our total complexity will be n times n times m which is equivalent to n squared times m which is of order 10 to the 7th and this is within our threshold of 10 to the 8th so we're fine so now let's go ahead and check out our code so this is our program I'll start by reading n the size of my array then I will declare an array of ints of size n and I will call it values and I will also declare a int sum that will sum up all my coin values and that will represent the size of my dp then I will look through all values from 0 up to n and I will read the values at position i and add it to sum then I will declare a vector of int and I will call it reachable and it will have a size equal to sum plus one because sum is included and I will initialize it with zero except for the value at position zero that I will initialize with one then I will look through all my coins and each time I will look from the last position that is equal to sum up to the values in question because there is no point going lower than this since this difference will be negative and I may get an out of bound exception so I'll just stop at values at position i and I will decrease the value each time and each time I will just or this position with the position that is a uh, values i coins away and I'm using or here because there are two cases either the position at reachable value minus values i is 1 or it is 0 so if it is 1 there are also two cases for my actual position and if my actual position is 1 I will have 1 or 1 which will remain 1 and if it is 0 I will have 0 or 1 which will give me 1 and that's exactly what I want Whereas if this value is 0, it will not affect my actual value since it will remain 1 if it is already 1 or 0 otherwise. And at the end, we are required to print the actual number of values we can achieve. So I'll first look through my reachable array and if it is set, I will just increment my count of possible values and I will output that then i will look through my array again and each time i encounter a set value i'll just print it so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye